All right, I got my four pontoon tops for the, the front and the backs. Each one of these is five and a half feet long, and they're going on a 20, 29 foot long pontoon. That means I have a, a 18 feet left of space to cover on the tops. Oh, and this last one that came off the sheet metal, it's so smooth. I'm gonna have to rough it up so I don't eat it every time I slip on it, step on it, and you know when it's wet. <laughs> sure came off there easy though. All right, so this is my thing here. Let me cut that so I have one pontoon. One tune. All right, so I've got five and a half feet back from there, and then five and a half feet back from there, which only comes up to like here. Man, it's not that big. So. On two of those, I need to continue for another five feet with a hole. And then at the other end, I need to, let me just measure it. Okay, from the point to here is about 10 feet, and from the back point to here is about eight feet. All right, and I need to put a hole in the 10 foot one. And then I'll worry about all this middle junk after. Oh, the sound that's always in the house is this huge fan. It blows pretty much any time the sun's out. And is this the coolest picture or what? All right, yeah, so I've got my 29 foot pontoon. Right now I've got a five and a half foot lid for it. I do another five and a half feet to get 11 foot front lid. And then I'll have this eight foot raised section and a two foot raised higher section. That'll be like the door to get inside the pontoon. Uh, you know, for super kid play zone sleep time. And then that leaves me with eight feet at the back. So I need to make one of these eight feet, well, two of them eight feet, and then the other two 11 feet with entry door holes, port holes, whatever, I don't know what they're called. So sounds good to me. All right, I hope I measured that pretty well. And that everything is centered. All right, I got my garbage cardboard tubes. And these aren't structural, they just have to hold the fiberglass in the shape until it hardens. And then these will just be encased inside the fiberglass and it doesn't matter what happens to them because the fiberglass will be the structural thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's like 11 feet of excellence. It might actually be 12. Yeah, like 11 and a half, I think. That's okay. If I can fudge the other numbers. Man, that came out great. You want your you want your sucker? Yeah. Okay, ask me for your sucker. I want my sucker.
Isn't there supposed to be a hole in this thing? Da, da. All right, I just have to just cut it out. Ah, come on, man, pay attention. Totally forgot about that. Well, before I put a hole in that, let me think. Maybe there's a better spot for a hole. Camera sometimes it zooms in for nothing. All right, I don't have enough space between two of these supports to put a door I can like comfortably fit through. So if I cut it out of here, I'm just gonna have to go right across one of these. Now it's gonna be a stupid pain in the butt. But maybe there's a better door spot, dude. Would you would you keep it down up here? What are you, some kind of monster? I saw you. All right, I've got this front part here, right? That's flat. And then I want to go up like a foot or so, and then come across, then have another part that bumps up, and there's going to be a door to get in there. And the original thought was to put the door here, so you kind of like scooch down, and then you can come up for like the emergency front exit. But if I put the door on top of this you know, this part that comes up here, right up here, I think that might, I think that'll be good, actually. Then I won't have to worry about smashing the door here when I'm loading and unloading stuff. And I'll just have this, like, there'll be a, a bulkhead here, about here. So there'll be a section in here that is just a super dry zone. So maybe I'll just put some shelves in there, and then I can shove stuff in there. And there's no, no door above it, so it can't get wet. Well hopefully. And then you can stand in the tall part and stick your head off the top. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. My brain must have just thought that was the way to go and didn't tell me. It was just like, let's just not put the hole there. And then Jamie will figure it out. Yeah, because if the door, if the, you know, if the hatch is up higher, I can leave it open most of the time. Because if it's lower on the front, I was thinking it would be good to have one like right in the front and right in the back so that the, the air could blow through. But the front one is going to be low enough that I'm not going to want to have it open all the time. So that kind of defeats part of the purpose. But it's, if it's up in the top, I can leave it open all the time because, you know, water's not going to splash way up in there. Yeah, I think that is a better way to do it. So I'm going to do both of these that way. Okay, so make the other one of these exactly the same as this one. Exactly, because I've got like real tight tolerances here. On the first one of these, it took me like 20 minutes to get all these lined up to the right spots. But uh, it's easier on this one because I can just take the first piece, stuff it in there, shovel these up against it, and then take that out. They should be all lined up as long as I don't bump everything. And I am so glad my brother brought me all these clips. So useful.